Hello and welcome back to another episode of Total War Warhammer. Last episode, we started some aggression against the dwarves, but I hope we can defeat them. They do have a lot of magic resistance, which is annoying considering a lot of my damage output in this army is coming from Lord Croak. However, I hope that we'll be able to take them out. They do have a lot of range firepower here. Specifically, I'm very wary of their thunderers and their grudge throwers. They are going to rip a lot of my guys to shreds. And also, these quarrelers, they're nothing to scoff at. They are going to do a lot of damage to my skink skirmishers if they are getting to range. If I have any chance of winning this, it's getting really good pileups of the dwarf units, preferably saying throwing Lord Croak out there first, absorb a lot of damage, as he does have good fizz resist, good missile resist, which conceivably, uh, with ward save, fizz, and missile resist all combined together, he should be able to tank the vast majority of the enemy firepower. Also, he's got a uh, silver shield here, giving 55% of small arms fire. So he's going to be my missile tank, try to take as much damage as possible from them, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll get some really good croak bombs by having them all uh, blob up around Gorok, and that should be good. So we'll quick save here, in case everything goes horribly wrong, <laughs> and let's fight the battle. <sighs> okay. So, for deploying in this battle, I'm kind of tempted to do one of two things. Either we deploy full on out of the front, we can see where the enemy is, which is good. Uh, thankfully, these guys are aquatics, they can move through this flank quite easily. Uh, we'll definitely gamble this, only five? <sighs> We're gonna get higher. <laughs> Still five. Ah, oh, that hates me. So they have got their gunners, their quarrelers right at the front. Um, I'm, I'm really tempted to put Gorok literally right here and just have him rush in immediately, put in Croak. Uh, is this impassable terrain? Oh, it's impassable terrain. Is not just like like shallows. This is impassable. <gasps> okay, so you literally can't go through there because all these guys should be able to deploy there. So this is the only place where we can collapse upon them. Oh, oh, this would be really good if we had any range. They could just sit back here and shoot, but that is not what our army does. You know, this is kind of okay in a sense, because the enemy can't hinge around us. They cannot flank this way. So if I set up a, a line here, like if I set up my forces right here, and I immediately deploy out in sort of this area, and then push, I'm going to be catching them on an angle where half of their melee units will be at the back of their formation, while half of their melee units will be... Uh, at the front of that formation there. So Lord Croak has to go here. So the idea is, oh, we don't have much means of power. Why couldn't I get off a deliverance if it's a three right at the beginning? So Gorok will charge straight in. Everybody else will, will hinge around here using this as a blocker and will immediately push into here. We'll have the... Uh, actually, I should separate these guys out into a separate group here. The, uh, the spears. Because they're going to go off on their own mission. They're going to go wide flank hard and come around this way and try to go after these grudge throwers. Where the, the skinks as well are going to come out hard flank this way. Uh, speaking of which, can I like pile... I could pile the skinks back over here. And they could come out from the forest. Oh, alternatively, I could pile the skinks... Uh, oh, I can't. I could. I could theoretically put them up there, but I don't even know if they can get out of there once I do. 
That would not be a good thing. Uh, I could pile the skinks up. If, if they can go around here, that'd be kind of nice. Then I can go directly into the grudge throwers. I can leave, like, one skink here and put the rest of them, like, here. Because then they can just come out of the trees and immediately go for the back of the grudge throwers. And these guys can attempt to go around this way. Because I don't want to put all of my eggs in one basket of them trying to get around here. So, Saurus Warriors will make a front line and immediately push. Saurus Spears will go hard flank and try to envelop. Gorok charges straight in to get them to bundle. Croak comes to here and starts charging up his magic. Throwing down some uh, uh, sh Supreme Shield of the Old Ones so that we don't die so quickly. The, uh, the skirmishers just get back here and then just start doing their shit and causing a lot of damage and hopefully taking out the grudge throwers before they can kill us. And this should be the best option we have. So I'll pause up the battle real quick here so I can get some guys moving immediately. These guys can come around. You guys come straight down this way. And you, can you come through here? You can. Okay, so then you come through here. Uh, Croak can come to there and hide in the forest. And Gorok go straight at the end of their lines. Everybody charge. See, so immediately they're starting to wheel. Yeah. We want these guys to get to here, and then shoot at those. Yeah, they're immediately all wheeling around. Come on. We're, we're getting magic pretty quick here, so we're going to get uh, an explosion here pretty soon. We've got our skirmishers coming in the back already. Our infantry is going to be here. These guys are already... We'll cut the corner like that. You need to move up to there to start your bombing. And Gorok just needs to push in. He's going to tank some of these... Uh, some, some of these shots here. Hopefully we can dodge a little bit of them. I'm trying to wiggle back and forth. But if we try to go attack the Thunderers, which we, we can give ourselves speed, can't we? Oh, we can have some damage resistance too. God damn. If I could get an explosion off with the Thunderers in it, that would be delicious. That would be the best thing I could do. Yeah, get these guys going in quick. shield down here. Protect up some of our units. Another few seconds here and we can do another big bomb. Find another blob of units right there. Go, 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 Rock. Pop all your uh, your stuff. Because why not? Yeah, see? See these guys? They're not going to win these range battles. These, The Quarrelers are so good at range fighting. Because they're they're shielded and armored, like they win range trades so well. Um, but one thing we have is we have the ability to move and fire while they don't, so we can like circle around them. But their artillery is dying, so that is good. Thankfully, several of their units are coming off the field. We're gonna get this, these spears around the side and hopefully push into these guys from the side. Which will be an excellent thing. You want to go after the Lord, don't you? Yes, you do. 
Because if we can sneak a few units around sides... Okay, good. Those guys are broken, that's fine. They're off their catapult, that's all that matters. Now these skink skirmishers can come in the back here and they can start putting DPS onto these guys from the rear. Another few points until we can get uh, another attack off. He is getting caught up in the miners there. That is not good for us, but this is going to be a good bomb. We're, we're going to take a lot of damage from this attack. That is for sure. But this is also going to do a lot of damage against these dwarves. We need to get these spears in play, though. They do nothing for us around this flank. So slow, though. <laughs> Get the, uh, the shield there up. Hopefully, that is giving us some benefit. And the Saurus can start running into the back of these guys. Excellent. Yes. Victory is in our grasp. It is possible here. Gotta keep the leadership high on these guys. You guys can do it. We can take out these dwarves. Squish this front line. Squish it, squish it. Go rock. Go and kill this lord, for God's sakes. You really need to. You guys can push on through. Leave that lord to fight somebody else. And do a medium-sized bomb here. Why not? It's not like we're going to get the magic for a full-size bomb anytime soon. But they're wavering, they're wavering. They should get army losses. Hopefully soon. Yeah, that bomb did it. Army losses. Got him. Now, we took a big hit to do that. All of our main infantry is down low. But we did okay. We'll just fast forward here and pick off as many as we can. Chase down who, who we can. And if we had a life mage priest, we'd heal up. But we don't. And pick off those miners, and that's probably good enough. Ah, that's fine. Close victory. Ah, yeah. Ah, their guys did a fair amount of damage. But thankfully, the units I was afraid of and that I focused hard on... Oh, you can see how good these freaking range unit star thankfully those thunderers i wasn't able to I, I did not let them do anything which was my goal but mm, we did take some losses but their main forces is gone how many uh, damage value did the croak get 350 kills 3841 nice uh a lot of damage on our melee infantry. Ranged infantry is okay. Gorok and Croak are fine. Uh, but we can take uh, recovery. recovery here. Recover by 7, which is good. Uh, treasury 1000 would be nice, but we don't need it. We, more importantly, need to recover. And we got the Blessed Croxigars. Nice. And some more money from there. Uh, complete the following Rite of Awakening for 2,000. Okay. Rite of Awakening for 2,000, which gives me 2,000. So that's like just free. So, I don't know. Might as well do it. 
and get another slime mage priest. And keep going for life mage priests, because they're the best. And he just becomes available, and we can hire him whenever we want. We don't have to do it immediately. Uh, keep getting up, keep production. Keep our army nice and cheap. 2,000 gold only. We've got Arcane Convergence, Winds of Magic plus 20. Excellent. Let's see. <sighs> yeah, we're not winning that. We are definitely not winning that. We can cheese this fight. Right? We could probably... Hmm. Not with the towers I have installed in mods. Because they have 180 degrees. So it's not like the normal game where the towers have radiuses like this. And they go really far. The mods, the mod has like a really short but powerful towers. So we can't like hide a, a unit right beside one of the towers and like a bomb from there. It wouldn't work. So I think the best bet is to besiege them this way, draw them out, and then we could easily beat these guys in the field. Um, we're a bit beat up, but I think we can do it. Uh, the other thing is, if we decide to, these guys are recuperating, and I don't want them to recuperate. Uh, you, yeah, cancel those three, we need to move on. You need to get up here. And also there is a battle for the Shield of Aeons. Nice. We'll do that after we kill the dwarves. You need to get up here so that you can assist. Because if you're here and you just go after these dwarves, you could just wreck them because we could swarm them. Now, a problem is, is that I can't really, like, move myself when I'm in the enemy uh, sphere of influence. So I have to break siege. And that breaks me out of their sphere of influence. But then I can't move past them. Ugh. So annoying. But I can at least move out of their... Um... I can force march. This is a mountain pass, so we'll take attrition. What can I do here? We could go into... What, astromancy? Or we go into ambush. Because I don't think sieging this will do any good. Because these guys are going to recuperate. We need to take them out. Uh, we don't want to get any of these places upgrading, but down here we can upgrade. So we'll get Master of the Old Ones, we'll get that an upgrade. We'll also do... Uh, money here and upgrade the food there. Spend all of our money. Okay. So if they come down to attack us, hopefully we can ambush them, which would be perfect. If they don't, we'll go into encamp next turn and we'll start to recuperate while our extra warriors bring. Uh, themselves back up. Ambush failed. Okay, though. This is fine. I can beat them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's nothing in our way. I can beat them this way. Letting the strike doesn't help at all. Excellent. Because their warriors are already half dead. So are mine. But I have these these spear units I can send in first. So my spear guys can take in the brunt. I can send in my warriors afterwards. So these guys can be on group one. These guys, two, three, four. These guys are on five. I'll gamble with five. Come on, it's got to be better than that. Hey, hey, we can bomb right away. 
So that's excellent. You can bomb immediately. Again, what we'll do is we'll go rock up front. He's got still plenty of health, so he should be okay. Uh, we'll put our skinks on a flank. And they will immediately start to flank. We'll put the spears out in front. Then we'll put the warriors uh, stacked up behind them as a second line to rush in. So the spears will go in and then the, sword, the warriors will go in. All the time, Croak just needs to be in range. So he has to move uh, approximately to there. And by that time, Gorok will be piling into the enemy, hopefully getting surrounded, and then I can blow the fuck out of the enemy. And that should be all good. So I'll start the battle. Everybody move. Gorok. Go for this guy. You guys go like that. Or just go like that. I don't want you to attack anything yet. I'll tell you what to attack in a moment. And then you guys are all just move up. Don't have anything particular for you to go after first. And I'm fine with my lord being under attack. Because I give myself damage resistance. And Fizz Resistance. And look, I'm hardly taking any damage at all. Ignore the thing. Run past him. Run past him. Go straight into the army. Everyone collapsed onto Gorok. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're going to boom this army away. And... Bubble Boom. Ooh, don't need to get you that close, sir. Uh. Another magic here, and I can bomb again. Come on, one more magic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bombing again. And they should start breaking soon. Their artillery is not going to do much, because they're getting shot to shit by like five units. Throw down the shield here. And this should be all she wrote for these guys. I mean, realistically. There's, like, I've already got, like, 100, 1500 value out of Croak. And we just started the fight. Yeah, another few minutes here, and uh, these guys will go down. We can probably just fast forward it, really. <laughs> Bomb that last remaining packet, and that should just end it. Yep, over. It's over. Uh, everyone claps around the Lord. See if we can get rid of the Lord and the Thane before they get off the field. <laughs> Lord's not getting away. He's stuck in a great big pile of lizardmen. That is for sure. <laughs> it's just a lizard pile. There's nothing you can do about it. Put up a shield. Why not? Just because you can. Bomb it. Just because we can. Just so Lord Crow can do a little bit more uh, damage value.
A little bit. Just a bit. Oh, come on. You gotta be done now. Is he not dead yet? God damn, these guys last forever. <laughs> I mean, I really enjoy when they last forever when I'm playing dwarves, but holy shit, they last forever when you're not playing dwarves. He's got sex health. Kill him already. Thank you. Jesus. That was great. I took hardly any losses there. Nice and evenly spread out throughout my guys. Nobody's really, really low. That takes out his main stack. That should be all of his units dead, except for the Thane. Maybe these quarrelers got away. But all of his infantry are dead for sure. We have our second line of warriors coming up to join us. Oh yeah, everybody is dead. Yep, Thane and Gorlers, exactly as I predicted. 3% uh, increase? No, that's not good enough. We'll take the 800 gold. Next turn, we'll be able to uh, recuperate. Or do I have to worry about recuperating? I will not disgrace my ancestors. Because if I head into attack now, I don't need to win this. But I just need to piss them off and siege. Even if they attack me, what I'm doing here is preventing them from recruiting and recuperating while I wait for my other infantry to get here. Yeah, baby. 1,800 for all these units. 90 per Saurus Warrior. That is incredible. And once these extra units get here in one, two, three turns, then we can launch an attack with them. And it'll, it'll turn out great. And we'll be done with those Spine of Sotex. The dwarves in our back lines will be defeated. And we'll have another province under our control. And once we've recuperated enough, we can uh, go and do this quest battle. Might, this quest battle might be next episode. Hey, Nakai's ready. I will get him later. We're not in the position to take Nakai the Wanderer right now. Uh, this place is ready to upgrade. And this is Itza. We're waiting for surplus. Six points. Six turns until surplus. Do I do that? Or do I just go with this now? Because then I can get an extra building here and I can get more money. Yeah, it's probably best to just do it now. Getting good speed there. I'll assign skill points. Unfathomable presence. Because we want to get transcendent healing. You guys are simply not wanting to come out and attack us in the field. We are going to get all of our stuff built up here. And then our guys will eventually arrive. But then we got the Monument of Itzel here. You guys are friendly. Can we get on aggression? Thank you. Uh, I don't... I don't want to fight them. I need to finish this province, but I don't want to fight them, which is why I need to get... Um, what are these guys? The Defenders of the Great Plan. Boom. Mami Mavitzel. 5,000. Okay. So I need to get 5,000 gold saved up. Which, after I take this out, and I can maybe, like, sack it. Uh, it would work. It could possibly work. Uh, do I have public order building somewhere else? Unlocking that. I do. Okay. Do I need public order here yet? No. This can be changed to food. Okay. One more turn, that guy's close enough, and then we can uh, knock over their pity resistance. A bit of a resistance. Mm, 
those interns. Haven't need to remove them yet. Still relatively short. Okay. So you guys can get into range, I hope, without having to march. My attack, are they coming in as reinforcements? They're not. Okay, so you do need to force march to get into range. However, now they're in range. And uh, it's not really auto-resolvable. I could auto-resolve, but I'd probably lose several of my dudes. Everybody that's half health here, I'd probably lose. Uh, how are we doing? Anyway. How long until these guys are taking damage? Three more turns until they run out of supplies. I could wait the three turns and just wait until they take some attrition because then that'll really improve my uh, my strength comparatively to taking them out. Could work. <sighs> but do I want to wait a whole three turns? When I could knock him out sooner. You guys can go into Winds of Power Magic Reserve. Yes, you guys can go into. It doesn't really matter what we go into. Okay, that's better now. Those guys are out of Force March. They're in a better thing. I'm going to lose some Source Warriors. I think that's okay, though. But if I auto-resolve this, it's done. And I have it. I'm guessing I'm going to lose, like, five Source Warriors. Oh, I didn't lose anything. Oh. Well, that's nice. I thought I'd lose some of these, uh, like, really low health Saurus Warriors. Nice. I'll just occupy it. Melee attack for Saurus units. Nice. Enemy killed in battle. And the Spine of Sotek Dwarves are gone. And we got the Legion of Chukwa Saurus Spears. Potion of Toughness for that dude. Ooh, alright. Oh, uh, we might want to get that to Gorok. He's also got another point here, which you get him renowned and feared. Even more upkeep reduction, which brings his army down to just $1,600. That is impressive. Because uh, right now we have Vanguard Deployment, the Dragonfly of Quicksilver, but it's not as important as, say, melee defense, armor, and regeneration, which is excellent, especially because I'm using this guy as a tank. Yeah, I want to take it off of that other character. Yes, please. Uh, we'll go through and really figure out what our uh, different uh, brains not functioning. What our different uh, equipment should be after we get some more armies and we figured it out. Uh, there's a place here that should be upgrading something that is not expandable, right? I don't want to stop any of these ziggurats or anything because they don't refund you the food. Um, I guess I just wait more, one more turn. We get we get three thousand. It's impressive, man. Three thousand is an impressive amount of dollars. Because we'll get that all next turn, and then we can buy the Monument of Itzel. And then we can have this uh, entire uh, place here. So by that, you are have not moved. That is okay. Uh, you guys... I kind of feel like I should just go kick these uh, Lizardmen butt. Order of Lore Masters is still alive. They only have the one settlement, though. But they have a pretty good stacks of units. Teclis is still holding his own. 
Luther Harkon is starting to push back against Tehenoin. So that's no good. So you should probably go force marching back this direction to go and assist Tehenoin. You're going to heal up here for a couple turns and then probably swing north, take this place, and then swing east. Sacred Pools. Ah, oh, it's his own thing, eh? Okay. They like me. Alright. Got some more research to do. Uh, Pterodon, don't really care. Kinks, sure. Income, construction, sure. We'll go with construction first. Next turn, we'll buy all of the goodies from Defenders of the Great Plan or whatever they're called. We'll buy that uh, that land from them, which will improve our life. Uh, who is besieging Tanuin? Is that Beastman? Yeah, it is Beastman. Uh, chaos recruit rank? No! Untainted and recruitment cost, sure. Not gonna be buying any units recently. Or in the next little while. Uh, so you guys, I want to buy from the Wardens. Uh, no, wait. Defenders of the Great Plan. Oh, I must have at least 50 standing. Damn! Okay, I can't buy that yet. That's unfortunate. Okay, I can't purchase that yet. But as soon as I get 50 standing with these guys, I can. So... Hopefully they like me in the future. Uh, who are they at war with? They are at war with the Sentinels. Okay, I could just go, go to war with the Sentinels and uh, they'll like me more. Because, you know, enemy of my enemy sort of feeling. In the meantime, I can just spend my money. And uh, another bit of healing up here, and I should be able to do this battle. I think it's a bunch of skaven, eh? Rat orders warp lightning cannons. Ugh. That looks frightening. I don't think I'm ready for that. Skaven warlord. Definitely not ready for that yet. Uh, are you in trouble here, Tehenuin? Do you only have one settlement left? You do. Uh, hopefully Tehenuin is going back to help himself and uh, stays out of that and stays alive. Uh, other than that, we can just spend money on upgrading and fixing and doing all sorts of things here. And getting all these places maxed out. Okay. Plus positive. Eh, it's negative, but it's okay. Positive that because mainly it's got the heroes here. Excellent. Okay. One more turn. Gorok is fully healed. And we can start the next pile of crap, which is attacking the guys to my left. Taking all those guys out. So I secure this peninsula. Because that is the most important thing. Is that. I secure all of the land on this portion of the... Like, we're in a corner here. So, like, the Golden Colossus here is probably, like, the most defensible city. Like, this province, because there's only one way people can get in. Like, it's assuming they're not ratmen or dwarves and jump underneath. But you can just park your armies, like, right in the middle here and just defend. It's quite easy. So, Chamber of Visions, Do we, we don't have any treaties with them, so we could declare war on them and just take it to them. That should make the Defenders of the Great Plan like us a lot more. And with that, then we can purchase the Monument of Itself. Excellent! So let's head on down here. As this is all still our land, right up into the border here. And the next turn, they have a decent stack. Shit. It's not good for us. Uh, Croak can do some good things. But I wonder, oh, I wonder, is it time for me to start getting some 
Stegodons. And Bastilodons. Stegodon does a lot more damage. Uh, but Bacillodon has a lot more health and... Or not, not a lot more health, just a lot more armor. Yeah, should I go get some Feral Stegodons, I wonder? I wonder if even if just getting rid of my Skink Skirmishers and getting Stegodons would be the right choice. Because, I mean, do these guys really help me right now? They haven't really done a lot of damage in these fights that I'm in. And they'd be much better if they were... Uh, blessing like the chame chameleon skinks because then they'd have um oh they do have poison which is nice so they do get that uh big minus to the enemy if i can get the flank in okay we're not gonna do this yet we can go back to itza we're gonna heal up and we're going to uh re-recruit some buddies yeah tehanoin covered himself there lucar harthon is moving out you can go for Chakwa there. And you can start going this way as he's going to re recruit at Itza. Okay. Uh, walls, because walls, they're important. Narrowing scrutiny. Uh, first spawning? Research rate plus 10. Yeah, we'll get that later. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Although, Cult of Sotek is starting to get down to the point where I could probably confederate them soon. They are getting weak. Which, them in a weak place, uh, leads them to want to confederate. So we should check. Not yet. They like us. They're 92 rank, but we're only we're 8 rank. So we're definitely kicking their ass in terms of rank. Uh, Hag Grief, I don't know how we know of these guys, but they're the only people, like, even, even nearby Monster to us Hunter. is the Huntsman Expedition 24. So, we are definitely the big fish here. Nothing to worry about yet. You guys are stuck at 45, very friendly. You're back to Itza, and we can check to see how hard this fight actually is. I'm not sure if that balance of power is correct or not, but we shall see. So many upgrades to do. It is unbelievable. Uh, money? We already got growth from the port. Well, we could use more growth, because, you know, always growth. But we don't we got decent money now. Now we're getting 3k in. But I still want more money. I also want to reposition this wall to be back in the top right corner. There's just something about it. Some little thing in my head that makes it so if my wall is in the top right corner, I'll hate it forever. Uh, so maybe this is a good opportunity to reposition this wall. <laughs> I'm such a weird person for that. Um, otherwise... Yes, you can go to three. That uses up the rest of my money. Excellent. Teclas is still doing his thing. Still alive. Still holding off the enemy on the right. And we're just... Uh, uh, your ally is being attacked. Defender of the Order of Lore Masters. Being attacked by the Awakened. Okay. Did they make war? and then uh, make peace again, and then go back to combat? Because if I remember, when I first made that defensive alliance, they were already at war with them. So they must have made peace, then done again. Uh, hero action? No. Treasury 2000? No. I don't need that yet. Uh, this is either a ruin or a ratman. So, if it's ruins, we'll search it next turn. If it's ratmans, we'll kill them. At least, hopefully. Alright, go rock sink in the base. We'll get rid of our skirmishers. And we do have some blesseds. But we'll save those. And we can start getting some dinos. Uh, how are we up for upgrading to the next level? Six points till population surplus. Or, sorry, six turns. 
and then another five turns. So 11 turns away from first getting the city, and then another four turns, so 15 turns from getting to even start a Stegadon that'll probably take three turns. Okay. So there's like 18 turns until we can even get a Stegadon. So in that meantime, we will get some dinos. Uh, Feral Bastilodon, compared to the Feral Stegadon, uh, Stegadon is just better. Minus 30 armor, but everything is better, especially weapon strength. And, oh god, look at that charge bonus, man. Yeah, I'll go with uh, Feral Stegadons. Go three Feral Stegadons. It's all I can afford right now. That's still really good. And I might want to just go for some more Saurus Warriors. Because they're cheap. They're really cheap in only 74. Like, look at this. 74 upkeep. Beautiful. I could even Blessed Spawn in the uh, three Blessed Saurus Warriors. And then we have them. Also, we had the other quest that was like do two things and get. Oh, that was Blessed Cross, of course, right? I think that was Saurus Spears for some strange reason in my mind. Alright, end the turn there. Yeah, pretty close. Getting close here to the end of the episode. We'll probably just end it after this turn. As we uh, start to get some dinos. Which will vastly increase our ability to do some damage. We rush some dinos in. They start rolling around and smashing people up with their armor piercing. Then everything just comes together. Uh, we'll get the walls there. And we'll get the food here. Upgrade the money there. You guys, I got one more turn till dinos. You guys, let's see, is this Skaven or Abandoned? It's Abandoned. We'll search the ruins. Ah, Rubric of the Old Ones. What a great thing to end the episode on. Throughout the world, the Old Ones left vast troves of power for use by their most trusted servants. To prevent such power falling into the wrong hands, they place wards of cryptographic locks over them. As millennia have passed, these wards have weakened, but the arcane locks remain. To access the treasure, solve the puzzle. Solitude is always desired. So this one, we want the one where the, the same symbol is only once. So, for example, arrow and arrow. So it's not arrows. So it's not this. But we have the two sort of fronds. Two fronds. We have the two sort of... I don't know what you want to call that. Mushroom. The two thing here. This is the only one that is itself. There is no other one that has that line down the middle of it. So it is obviously this. And we get the Jaguar Standard. Vanguard and additional speed. Plus a thousand gold, which is quite nice to have. Uh, can I use a thousand gold on anything? Fourteen hundred gold. I can get another Feral Stegadon. And then just two more... Six Feral Stegadons? Is that excessive? That'll yeah, be fine. But that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. And uh, good hunting out there, fellow, uh, fellow lizard men. <laughs>